Hi, Michael here. Today I'll show you a psychological thriller science fiction film, called Bliss. Spoiler alert. You'll understand the important plot points. Greg Whittle is working in an office when his daughter Emily calls to invite him to a dinner commemorating her graduation. Greg is concerned about his strained relationship with his ex-wife and wonders if he could simply take Emily and his son, Arthur, out the next day. At his desk, he sketches a drawing of a beautiful woman. He is recovering from an injury and calls to have his prescription refilled, but the pharmacy informs him that he has used up all of his refills. His wallet flickers on his desk after he leaves his office, as if it doesn't actually exist. He gets called to his boss Bjorn's office, where he is informed that he has been dismissed. He barely reacts, but then suddenly shoves Bjorn, who falls backward and cracks his head on his desk, and dies. Panicking, Greg hides the body behind the window curtain and leaves the office. He goes to a nearby bar, where Isabel Clemens keeps a close eye on him. She reaches her arm out and nothing happens to Greg. She tells him he's real since he wasn't affected by her powers. She demonstrates with a wave of her arm that she can move objects with a wave of her hand. Isabel is aware of the murder and tells Greg that she would help him get out of it, because she feels responsible for the situation since she created it in the first place. She claims that in exchange, Greg must get an amulet necklace from her ex-boyfriend, as he is also real and her powers do not work on him. She claims the necklace contains a special yellow crystal that has the ability to manipulate the fake world. Because his ex is unconscious, he can simply grab the necklace and deliver it to her. Isabel explains to Greg that nothing in the world is real except for a few rare people. She uses the power to open the window, dropping Bjorn's body out, making it look like a suicide, clearing Greg of suspicion. Isabel leads Greg to an encampment where she lives. He inquires if she is homeless, to which she responds that she lives off the grid. He regrets killing Bjorn, but Isabel continues to explain that he wasn't real. Isabel teaches him how to use his mind to light candles, and he shows her sketches of his ideal home and a community, that he can see clearly in his head. He gives her a photograph of a woman, and Isabel confirms that it is of her in their real-life relationship outside of this world. They share a kiss. Emily visits Arthur and requests his assistance in locating Greg and persuading him to attend graduation. He says he can't because they can't trust him anymore. He implies that their father is constantly injured because he is addicted to prescription painkillers. Isabel and Greg consume more yellow crystal and begin rollerblading, knocking people over with their powers. Greg begins following Isabel's belief that there are no consequences because nothing is real. As they walk away, they look back and see themselves being arrested. Suddenly, they are the people being arrested, and eventually released from jail. Meanwhile, Emily continues her search for her father in shelters. Isabel urges Greg to go into a restaurant without her, and then he sees her get into a car and leave dressed as a prostitute. Arthur sees his father, who appears to be homeless and unable to buy food because he has no money. Isabel finds Greg and leads him to a building. She enters and discovers a man working on the yellow crystals. While he waits outside, Emily spots Greg on the street and begs him to come with her, but he declines, stating that he must wait for Isabel. He expresses his delight at her graduation, which she informs him occurred two weeks earlier. She writes her phone number on a graduation picture and leaves it with him. Isabel comes outside and she and Greg are harassed by a threatening man. Greg consumes multiple crystals, more than Isabel said to, and crushes the man's van with his telekinetic powers, then he throws up. Later, he attempts to contact Emily but only receives her voicemail. When he returns to the encampment, Isabel freaks out that she didn't know where he was. She is furious that he tried to see his daughter, and is devastated that he is buying into the illusion of the fake world. She feels like he's going to drag her down with him. He says maybe they should stop spending time together, and she slaps him. She says they're soulmates, but he says that her scenario of only her knowing who's real has forced him to depend on her and he doesn't believe in her. He wants proof this is all real. She agrees and brings out some rare blue crystals, claiming that they will eject them from the simulation if they use them. Though frightened, Greg takes the crystals. He wakes up in a scientific facility, where Isabel too wakes up. They are referred to as doctors, and Isabel informs another scientist that Greg became attached in the simulation again. They exit the facility and see a beautiful world. Some people appear holographic, which Isabel says is the trend these days. She tells Greg his memory loss will wear off. Greg sees the world looks exactly like his drawings, including their home. Greg's memory hasn't returned, which Isabel worries could be because they exited so abruptly. She shows Greg his invention, the Thought Visualizer, a machine that illustrates your thoughts. She tells him all about the world, 
where synthetic biology turned a dying world into a free utopia. She tells him that you have to experience the good to appreciate the bad and vice versa, which was the purpose of the simulation. Emily, on the other hand, continues her quest for Greg. Isabel tells Greg they need to go to the lab but he convinces her to spend one more day outside the simulation, swimming and enjoying the beauty. They attend a scientific mixer, where another scientist tells Greg, he's heard that there are problems with Isabel's research. Isabel overhears and gets angry saying no one believes in her. Greg insists he does. At the party, Emily as a hologram appears looking at Greg but is warned by someone that he could be unpredictable. Isabel continues to be angry and insists that they need to go back into the simulation to get more data, but Greg says he isn't going back in and she should just publish her research as is. Isabel presents her research on how bliss can only be achieved by understanding the contrast with the opposite. Isabel invites Greg to the stage and asks him how he feels, and if he has any complaints. He feels great and is very happy. She plays an interview with him from before he went into the simulation, where he is surly and frustrated with life's small annoyances. She asks him if he's lacking anyone in his life right now, and he sees a hologram of Emily in the crowd, but he says no. In the original interview, he says there is someone missing. Isabel sums up her research by stating that a man who was formerly frustrated, is now joyful and enthusiastic about life. Following that, Isabel is received extremely positively at a reception. Greg continues to see Emily's hologram and follows it, until it stops being holographic. He asks how she can be real. She tells him he isn't thinking clearly. She hands him the yellow crystal she found at his campsite, and tells him eventually he will need to choose between worlds. The reception is sieged by angry protesters, and devolves into fighting and mass chaos. Greg takes the yellow crystal and uses his powers to defuse the protesters, and he and Isabel race to the lab as the world around them continues morphing between the two worlds. Isabel theorizes that they must have brought the simulation into the real world, and that they need to go back into the simulation and take blue crystals to stop it. They enter the simulation and wake up in the homeless encampment in the pouring rain. They start looking for the blue crystals, and Greg notices Bjorn alive and begins freaking out. Isabel tells Greg they rebooted him. They steal a car from one of Isabel's Johns and go to get blue crystals. Isabel pulls a gun from the glove compartment, shoots her supplier and takes the crystals. Meanwhile, Emily goes to Arthur and says she got a call that Greg was panhandling outside of his old office, when he saw Bjorn. The police follow Greg and Isabel to the encampment and surround them. Isabel realizes there are not enough crystals for both of them to exit, and one of them will be trapped inside. Greg says he can't stay inside and she gives them to him. Greg has another idea. He suggests that she kill him inside the simulation and meet him on the outside. She refuses, claiming that it is all her responsibility because she is the one who created it all. Greg tells her the world is kind of beautiful because you never know what's going to happen next. Emily arrives, screaming for her dad but is held back by the police. Isabel realizes Greg is still attached to Emily, and he apologizes. He gives her the crystals, and she leads the police toward her, so Greg can escape. She then takes the blue crystals. Greg flees and goes to a rehab clinic. At a group meeting, he presents the photo of his daughter and says, this woman says she's my daughter, and I believe her. Later, Greg meets with Emily and brings her flowers and they hug. This is Michael Movie Recap Channel. See you in the next video. Bye.